But when you cut it all at once, you put it through a system, it contaminates everything. You ship it across the United States, takes three or four days to get to Wisconsin. Most of the illnesses were in Wisconsin, Ohio, and Minnesota. Why? Because it spent three or four days perking the E. coli in the bags as it crossed the United States in trucks. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, keep things simple is my motto, um, you know, and I think that's probably the best way to be safe is keep things simple. Don't eat overly processed foods. Don't eat things that you could wash and cut up yourself. Um, you know, try to be a little bit more simple. I know it's not, nothing is like easy in life. There's no convenience. No. You know what I mean? It's like, it's uh, like, no, I know. It's, it's, hey, I get it. You I know, learned this it, about many things in life. It's yeah, never, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no, no simple cut. It, yeah. And, and, you know, it's it, the other way to look at it is why do we have to do that? Why can't the producers of the food and the government that regulates it, like figure this shit out on their own, you know? And the thing is they can, but again, it gets back to the fact that they don't think they're going to get caught for the most part. Uh, I catch them as often as I can, but I don't yeah. catch everybody. And and they don't think they're going to get caught. And the government isn't doing the job that they should do, in my opinion, to regulate these people into doing the right thing. Yeah, they catch them every once in a while. They find them. They put them in jail. I sue them, take a bunch of money from them. Some of them, they go bankrupt. But the fact of the matter is, is everyone thinks it's not going to happen to them. And so therefore, they don't think they're going to get caught. Well, I wish you Why could see anything? the lobbyists that, you know, that yeah, lobby yeah. for I these mean, guys. Uh, I wish, you know, because that yeah. would make them think twice about taking a lobbying job. You know, it's right. like, but right. okay, I, I want to go back because I know my listeners want to hear this. List out the items that are the most dangerous in a grocery store. So and I will yeah. interrupt. Go ahead. No, 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 that's fine. It's uh, sprouts, uh, bag salads cut fruit, pre-cut fruit that you buy in little things. Those are the things in a grocery store, in my view, that are like the most dangerous, primarily because you're not going to do anything to them. And if they're contaminated, you're just going to eat them. You know, chicken, you have to understand that chicken is, you know, absolutely likely to be contaminated with salmonella and you have to treat it as such. As I said, I wouldn't eat raw hamburger, but Hamburger and red meat is a lot safer today than it was when I started doing this work 30 years ago. So, and of course, you know, depending upon what state you live in, there are some people that, you know, you can get access to raw milk and raw juices, especially for young kids. Avoid that um, because they can become contaminated. If you think where like the cow's udder is and the where the E. coli comes from, it's kind of a close proximity. Yeah. I, I've represented way too many kids who've developed severe disease, E. coli disease from drinking raw milk or raw juices. So those are, of all the things, I'd just be really careful. You know, the one thing I think consumers need to understand is, you know, bacteria um, are really good at killing the most vulnerable of us. And the most vulnerable are really young kids, pregnant women, people over the age of 65, and people who are immune compromised. That's a pretty big chunk of our society, if you think about it. You know, if you're, you know, a 25-year-old, 30-year-old, 40-year-old person, likely of you dying from you know, an E. coli infection or salmonella infection is really low or even having severe complications. But, you know, right now I'm working on an E. coli case uh, that's linked to the University of Arkansas to a sorority where there's looks like there's about somewhere between 20 and 40 people sick, including six young women who've developed kidney failure. So, I mean, it can happen to, you know, people who are even relatively healthy. But, you know, that's that's the people for the most part that need to pay a lot of attention to keeping hot things hot, cold things cold, washing your hands, 
washing your cutting board. But, you know, again, my feeling is we should be getting, you know, our government regulators, the industry leaders to be making these things as safe as absolutely humanly possible. Mm -hmm. So moms and dads are not worried whether or not they should take their kid to an IHOP or take their, you know, buy a bag of salad because you want to have something healthy and quick for your kid. You know, that to me is we've got a long way to go when it comes to that. Um, you say in the documentary, buy loose lettuce. So a head of lettuce is better because you can wash yep. it. You can control it. Um, yep. It's not you. It's a woman that's in the documentary, but she's like, I would never eat a raw oyster ever again. I, would Do you ever eat raw oysters? <laughs> so I don't. It's like but, I, we catch but my, wife, but my wife does. And, you know, it's like we'll go out to a really nice place for dinner and we'll be sitting there and and she'll order like six oysters. And I'm just like. You know, I guess that's why we've been married for 35 years. You know, <laughs> she just she just enjoys mocking me. So but but so. you personally would not. You would not. You're oh, like, no, I'm not going to risk no, it. No. OK, no, um, no. talk to me about pregnant women, because, you know, I'm I have a two and a half year old. I'm trying to have another baby. I often hear pregnant. A lot of women on my show or around my show are right. trying to have babies. And a lot of times I hear, oh, you know, you can eat that. So, you know, you can just go to a high end place and have good sushi. Does high end make a difference? It, it does Whole Foods make yeah. a difference? No, no. I've I've sued Whole Foods. I yeah. can't tell you how many times. And and so you know, pregnant women are uh, the the main thing they're most at risk for is a pathogen called listeria, and it's a it is a we're just having a a horrible outbreak uh, up here in, in the Seattle area where. Six oh. people got sick. Three people died from eating milkshakes of all things. And I, you know, I've been talking to one of my new clients is a woman, she's 70 years old. She and her husband married 45 years and he eats a milkshake. Three weeks later, he's dead. I mean, it's terrible. But for, for pregnant women, listeria is the thing you have to watch for. And, you know, pay attention to what your doctors say. They, they tell you, Stay away from deli meats. Stay away from uh, soft cheeses. Um, you know, listeria can be incredibly deadly. Not so much for the for the uh, woman, but for the for the the fetus, the baby. A um, lot of premature births with uh, you know devastating consequences to the child. And I've unfortunately have seen that way too many times. Um, but yeah, I mean. Pay attention to what your doctors tell you not to eat. Um, uh, I, I represented a woman who, uh, in a, a Los Angeles area woman years ago, who uh, was pregnant. She and her partner had, um, uh, uh, you know, wanted this baby for a long, long time, and uh, just happened to have a little cheese from a really high end, you know, cheese and wine shop, and the baby was born. Uh, you know, three and a half months premature, uh, lived for about a month, and then unfortunately just was died because of it was just too traumatic on it. But yeah, I mean, people just need to pay attention, and you know, the industry needs to do a better job of paying attention to making sure these products aren't contaminated to begin with. A hundred and ten percent. I think that's so such a good reminder for women because I think sometimes we go, eh, you know, what are the chances? But you see it. I mean, there yeah. it, there's chances, you know. Listeria, yeah. I mean, that milkshake outbreak is so sad what's happening because it's oh, a it's kind of terrible. a family owned burger chain, you know. It's yeah. it's it, I'm sure they're devastated. It the whole yeah. thing is so devastating. But it's listeria, a mess. It's it, a the mess. listeria okay, I'm really nervous though, because I love ice cream when I'm pregnant. Is it like, is ice cream ever safe to eat or no? I thought it was safe. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned nothing. I know, like I know, I know, I know. I see. I've learned I, nothing. See, I actually, I, you know, I think I'm a really nice person and I think I'm kind of fun and, 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 but you know, no one ever invites me over for dinner. So no one ever does. And, <laughs> and I feel mostly, I, I, I don't feel bad for me, but I feel bad for my wife, who's a wonderful you know, a wonderful woman and and a lots of fun. 
Uh, and a lot of times when I'm out of town, people invite her over because, but yeah, that's the way it goes. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, Listeria is a very nasty bug. Um, really wasn't even thought of as a problem in ice cream until really the last 10 years, but we had the Bluebell ice cream outbreak that sickened dozens, killed four. Uh, we've had, you know, multiple uh, ice cream outbreaks. It's not the ice cream itself that's causing the problem. It's the failure to clean the equipment that people are using to make ice cream or to make milkshakes. The listeria, listeria is a is a environmental pathogen. So it's it's kind of everywhere, but it grows really, really, really well at refrigerator temperatures. Unlike Salmonella and E. coli, that the refrigeration retards bacterial growth and but in listeria it really likes that kind of environment so what happens is the listeria will get into a crack into a piece of machinery and it'll grow uh and it'll multiply and then it'll slough off into some unlucky person's milkshake and then they may clean the machine not quite good enough and then it'll take another three or four or five weeks for it to grow enough and they didn't clean it well enough and it'll slough off into another person's milkshake. And you just keep having this long outbreak, which is what happened up here. You know, the illnesses ran from February to July and there were only six of them, but that's because they didn't clean the equipment the way they should have. 